It was no doubt a very big week in politics, from Chris Christie's Bridgegate scandal, then to Robert Gase's tell-all book. Not to mention the big week that's ahead, with a showdown vote on the extension of unemployment benefits. Here to help us make sense of it all is Lenny McAllister, former U.S. congressional candidate and conservative political commentator. He joins us live from Pittsburgh this morning. Mr. McAllister, thank you so much for joining us. Good morning, Morgan. So first off, you are a conservative, right? So how badly has Chris Christie's Bridgegate scandal hurt his chances of running for the president bid on the Republican ticket? <laughs> you know, we're two years away. I mean, at this time, if you compare it to 2008 and 2006, Barack Obama hadn't even announced that he was going to run for the presidency. We have plenty of time. It really goes back to this press conference. People thought he was sincere. People believe that he's being transparent. As long as that stays the case, as long as, long as there's no big bombshell that comes out showing that he has his fingerprints all over this, there's more than enough time to move away from this. Because the truth of the matter is, the people that he needed to impress in regards to early momentum for 2016 are folks in debate land in South Carolina, folks in debate land in Iowa, folks in debate land in New Hampshire. And he's not gonna even be campaigning there anytime soon and to be quite honest if people like him in Iowa they're not going to really worry too much about a bridge in New York right now. Okay but you said he's really impressed them and I don't really know are they impressed in debate land because some have really said he came off quite like a bully. He, Chris Christie is always going to come off like a bully, but for once he came off with a sense of humility. When people asked him, did you reconsider the type of team you put together and why the folks that were on your team may have taken these types of steps? He said, yes, it made me reflect upon my style. He's going to always be tough. He's always going to stand up for what he thinks is right. He's going to always be direct. But for once he also took a step back and said, hey, I'm willing to admit my mistakes, even if I had nothing to do with this directly, indirectly, because the buck stops here, it's my fault. When he said that for over the course of two hours at that press conference, people on both sides of the aisle said, we'll give him the benefit of the doubt for now. Okay, well, the buck did not stop here for Robert Gates. Let's talk about this tell-all book. Do you think he gave the president a fair assessment? I think, unfortunately, the time timing was bad, but the assessment may have been fair. I think that being a career military guy, being a Republican that came in with the Bush administration, he did not like seeing some of the politics that ended up being involved in the Obama administration. He gave him kudos for being brave when it came to going after Osama bin Laden, but at the same time, he did not like the political back and forth and the emissions that you heard between the Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton, and some of the other things that were going on in the room. And that, that probably prompted him to walk away from the administration. And I'd have to imagine it, it takes us back almost 10 years ago. What might have been going on in the room when Colin Powell walked away from the administration as well? You see people do this from time to time when they've accomplished enough in their careers where they don't have to put up with the political quote unquote shenanigans anymore. And it seems as though this is what Secretary Gates did. Okay, I want to go back to something you just said, Lenny. You mentioned the timing, but the timing is just all too curious. This is right as the U.S. sits and waits for a signature from President Karzai. Gates then just drops this bombshell. Why would he do that now? Well, part of it is politics, part of it's selling books. He is no longer in the business of being involved in a defense department on an everyday basis, obviously. Therefore, part of this is selling books. Part of this is getting involved in the news cycles. And if, if you want to look at an indirect reason, of course he's going to want to try to influence policy to make sure that the people that were loyal to him and that he's loyal to that still work at the Pentagon have a little bit of leverage to get their points across to the president to the administration moving forward. So there may be some type of defense policy reasoning behind it, but it's going to be, if anything else, more nuanced and very, very direct. Lenny, you mentioned loyalty, and that's likely something that's going to come into play on this showdown vote on the new unemployment insurance proposal. It's scheduled for this week. Will Democrats get the loyalty and the support that they need? I think the Democrats will be able to coalesce around their cause and get that. It really is going to boil down to Republicans. Are, are we going to be able to 
to as a party look at Americans and say with this job report that came out on Friday when we see the economy when it comes to building jobs for working class and middle class Americans being as stagnant as it is can we really afford to not make sure that there's some type of safety net there I, and I said this in December I, I wish that the Republicans would have put something in the budget in December. For that safety net right Democrats well, and absolutely Republicans but on both sides of the aisles are that's exactly what they're searching for you're, you're absolutely correct, Morgan, but I would have liked to have seen Republicans find a way to put this in the budget, even for 30 days, to get us through January and then have this fight while people had that safety net. Now people don't have anything there to secure them. And you're looking at these job numbers. The jobs are not coming back. There needs to be something that's there that, one, make sure that Americans can get through this rough patch, but two, get Americans back to work. And it's going to be a very nuanced, balanced act that both sides of the hour are going to have to come together with. We're seeing that people are trying to do this in the Senate, but barely as far as passing it. Hopefully in the House, they'll be able to broker some type of deal that makes sense. Thanks very much. Lenny McAllister, former U.S. congressional candidate and conservative political commentator. He joins us live from Pittsburgh this morning. Lenny, always a pleasure. Thanks for joining us. God bless, Morgan. Thank you.